It's time now for The Morning Magazine, brought to you by the Riverview Hospital in Wisconsin Rapids and Comfort Air Heating, Cooling, Plumbing. Now, with The Morning Magazine, here's Carl Hilke. Thank you, Jerry, and good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's show on AM 1320, as well as on the web at WFHR.com. It's that time of the month when we visit with the mayor of Wisconsin Rapids. Uh, Zach Verwink is here, and the phone lines will be open at 424-2600, pound 1320 on your U.S. cellular phone. With that, we welcome the mayor of the city of Wisconsin Rapids, Zach Verwink. Uh, Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, Carl. Well... Interesting weather yesterday. No uh, so, so, uh, one of these situations where uh, everyone was expecting, okay, a clipper system, okay? Mm-hmm. And it's not going to be much of anything to worry about. And gradually it got heavier mm-hmm. and heavier. Mm-hmm. We had a little break in the morning, and then it came back in the afternoon even stronger, windier. Windier, and, yep. and, 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 and everything went downhill mm-hmm. from there. And mm-hmm. in general, I guess, around this area... 10 inches or so mm-hmm. well okay the the question i uh, i guess is how do you, you can't prepare for something like, like that no you can't well it certainly keeps those that are in the in the business of snow removal busy which is a good yeah. thing and in recent years and in, in lighter snowfalls those have kind of been uh, struggling in their businesses but i think you know it's a positive for them and i think you know for governmental entities it, it presents challenges for us and so th- today i've got uh, street superintendent jim borski joining me uh, to talk a little bit about the snow removal process and yesterday's event you know was something that uh, was was kind of you know very extensive in the sense of how much time it, it it took i mean from earlier in the morning till late in the evening and and obviously you can only have guys working so many hours during the day mm-hmm. just because you don't want to wear them out and and uh, that sort of thing so you know, be glad to answer questions and go through the process in which uh, snow removal. Uh, okay, occurs. well, uh, good morning, Jim. Morning, Carl. Uh, okay, well, first off, you had, uh, like in the afternoon, it all hardly paid to even have plows out on the certain highways or, or the roads because of the wind and the heavy snow. As soon as you plow it, right. It was, the, there was one point in the afternoon where we ha- had plowed Highway 34 coming into the town, I believe, for the third time, and there was a traffic accident out there, so I stopped and made sure the police department got up there and uh, left the accident in about five minutes and the, the plows had gone through just as I got to the accident and by the time I left there you couldn't tell they had gone through. It was snowing such big flakes, so heavy and the wind blowing that you know what they had done five minutes earlier was undone already. Okay, one of the questions people probably want to know is the priority of the streets. I, uh, when I drove into work yesterday I noticed there, there was still a lot of snow on the Riverview Expressway, and people might go, well, don't they get that right away? So why don't we go over how you prioritize the order that you do your snow removal? Okay. Uh, you're right. The expressway is a high priority, highest priority. Um, yesterday was an unfortunate thing because of the timing of the snowfall. It uh, didn't start snowing till 4. At 5, 5.30 in the morning, we had an inch or so, not enough to plow yet. Um, but then when you get into the 6 to 7 o'clock in the morning time, that's rush hour, basically. Right. And it's the worst time for us to be out there. We, we slow everything down. We, we hold back traffic, and it's not safe. Uh, so we left our highways go yesterday, which is not typical. Um, I guess our priority is we plow the highways through town, 8th Street, the expressway, Highway 54 coming in from Plover, um, Highway 73 and 13 and 34. Those are number one priorities. At the same time, we send a machine into our downtown area, and at one or two machines, and we plow the downtown. Um, usually takes two to three hours to get that phase of the plowing done. Then we move on to arterial streets like Lincoln Street on the east side, 17th Avenue on the west side. Uh, plow all our arterial streets, Two Mile Avenue, High Street, 25th Avenue. Mm-hmm. Um, the industrial park gets plowed at the same time and that takes another two to three hours. Then after that, we go to the residential areas, just the strictly residential streets and plow those, and those can take five to six hours to get them all completed. Okay, now we've had, I should mention, we uh, uh, snow emergency is in effect until noon today. Right. How far uh, along are you with the snow removal? We're essentially done. Um, a lot of the plows were calling me at 8.30 saying, I'm done with my area, is there anything left? And we went out and opened up our snow dumping sites in anticipation of tonight's snow loading. Um, 
but for the most part the plows are done we've got some alleys to clean up some some minor cleanup to do but the majority of the streets are plowed okay okay and all that, of the streets uh, so in that, all a nine hour rotation it takes to get through all city streets which i right. think is important for people to remember that you know if you're looking for high highest priority then you're higher and then your medium to low priorities it takes a, a bit of time to get through 151 street miles throughout the city yeah yeah, you got and you got this river going mm-hmm. in, in between, which complicates things and, further. And another thing that slowed us down yesterday was we had to replow the highway so many times just to keep them passable and safe. You know, we kept pulling units out of their their normal route and saying, "Go back out and clean the highways off." Every time we got a couple inches, we have to scrape them off, or the cars just have trouble. Okay, okay. Well, I, I think it's important for people to understand uh, the challenges you face especially in that kind of a storm and it was like a two-phase storm basically mm-hmm. you had the early morning and then it stopped mm-hmm. and, then you could, uh, uh, and then all of a sudden i'm getting weather advisory saying okay get ready here comes the tail end it's like uh like we were in the eye of a hurricane and here right. comes the the <laughs> back side of it and the back side just like where the hurricane was the worst part of the storm right. was mm-hmm. winds really kicked up it I looked outside sh- shortly after I started my noon uh, show, and it was like whiteout. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's those are the storms that really try your patience. You know, you're supposed to get two to four inches, and you get six to eight, and it's it's typically that same thing we saw yesterday, where the storm just can't move off to the east. It's coming into an east wind, and they just seem to stall over us for some reason. And you, you <laughs> snowmobilers you, love it. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's good for shooters. the in, the economy, I guess, but it's it's tough on our our. You know, you, you set up your plan according to how much they predict or you're going to get, and it goofs everything up because you your start times are wrong then. You're, and plowing during the daytime hours is tough for us. Uh, we get the most done the most efficiently at night. Well, yeah, because you, you have to let a lot less traffic. Right. And when uh, during the business time of the day, you got to deal with all this traffic. I mean, right. the expressway at almost any time, but you mentioned like rush hours, either early morning or like after 3 o'clock. Right. It's <laughs> that's incre- that that would be incredibly dangerous for you guys. Right. It it's not so dangerous for us because our equipment's bigger than most cars, but yeah, it's yeah. it's dangerous for the public. Yeah. Um it causes accidents for us which slows us down considerably, but as far as our employees getting injured or something like that, not that big of a risk, but you know, we don't want to hurt anybody else or damage anybody else's equipment and there, there's just too many people. And on. that brings to mind Wisconsin has a law you're supposed to allow so much space behind a plow 200 feet yes because um, uh, i got a call from a gentleman that uh, left a voicemail and please would you remind people yeah. <laughs> about the rules mm-hmm. we oh. do have issues with that we try to when we do plow the highways during the daytime hours or even at night um, we try to plow them in tandem so people can't get be- around one plow and then pass the other because a lot of times there isn't room and the plow doesn't drive a straight line down the road either. We have to turn into the left turn lanes whenever they happen. So the car sees an advantage to get around on the right. Well, then we swing back out into the to the other lane when we're through the intersection. And we've, we've caught some cars between vehicles before. Now, when do you do the removal of snow from the downtown? Or, or you know, we've got these piles now. Right. Uh, that That's like phase two right yeah we're, we're scheduled to do that tonight we're coming in at midnight we'll start on west grand and work our way across the river and get the business district downtown and if things go well we'll branch out into the schools and churches and get those as well and then our third phase is to widen the highways eighth street's getting narrow already um, we'll take a, a, a one or two times during the winter and pull the highways off to make sure we keep our width there uh, so tonight is the night it's it's basically determined by when the snow banks get so high that the businesses have nowhere to put it anymore and the pedestrians have nowhere to walk anymore, then we go in and take them out. Okay. You mentioned dumping area. Where does this snow go? Now, uh, we should remind folks, you can't dump it in the Wisconsin River like in my when I was a kid growing up in town. Yeah, unfortunately, that, that was a quick, easy place for us to dump. Uh, we didn't have to push the piles up to keep space it just went away uh, <laughs> the dam operators didn't like it because it would get down to their gates in big globs and plug them up sometimes but uh, uh, we dump at four or five different places primarily in town we, we dump at the city garage we've got some open ground there uh, we dump next to the highway 34 overpass we also dump up off a of love street in a gravel parking lot uh, and we will be dumping behind the southwood county 2000 hockey rink eventually so okay so you've got plenty of areas to 
build a mountain of snow. Right. And then, of course, um, next Saturday, uh, the folks at the Humane Society are going to be very happy with all mm -hmm. the snow. You're mm -hmm. going to be able to provide for the snow sculpture right, contest, which I'm going to be helping to judge. There's been a few years where we didn't know if we'd have a supply for them. Or not. <laughs> no, not this year. That's the case. <laughs> this year? <laughs> have at it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, how is the budget? so far this winter well jim and i talked about that uh coming in here today uh just to do a comparison year to year i think um we don't have december numbers financials yet uh, just because we're so close into the month of january and the finance director unfortunately has been ill so um we don't uh, have up-to-date numbers in december jim can you is there anything beyond um the numbers there that well the the know? preliminary numbers we got and and all the costs aren't in yet but it looks like with the easy winners that we've had in the past we've had some carryovers so this mm -hmm. year we went into the year with a good amount way more than we normally do somewhere in the neighborhood of nine hundred thousand dollars it looks like at first blush that we'll probably be all right we won't be over budget um, but now for next year we've budgeted six hundred and fifty five thousand which is a typical amount that we need for a winner and we've started january already with a bang so it, it kind of depends on the year last year it snowed into april and maybe even may and then it started pretty hard here in december so it's a good thing we had those years of carryover mm -hmm. to get us through 2013. And we do budget on a three-year average, and I would even, as the chairman of the airport commission on the way over, I was thinking about the airport snow removal too, and you know we always have those carryover years, so you have that cushion or buffer, okay. so you don't get in a situation where you're drawing into reserves just to pay for snow removal. Um, you know, obviously you'd want to keep those reserves for other purposes and disaster and those sorts of uh, circumstances. So, um, you know, just budgeting for that cushion just so we don't run into a situation. Jim, is there anything on the salt? Uh, I was going to ask about that. In the past, okay. I remember one uh, a mayor, uh, I think it was when Jerry Bach was mayor, he was all upset one time. We got a price quote, and I think you were on the show at the time. You got a price quote for salt, and then all of a sudden it changed. Yeah. <laughs> we had that year when the price of diesel fuel jumps substantially, and all of a sudden we had uh, trucking surcharges added to our yeah. salt deliveries, which nobody was ready for. You know, the, the, the price spiked. Um, this year, our, our we go in with a state contract uh, wood county's in the same contract uh, we group up and try to buy salt at a decent price and uh, i think for now we're okay i mean we've got a pretty well full shed of salt right now and i think we've got about 500 tons left in our seasonal fill and then the vendor has to reserve an additional 20 20 percent if we need it we don't have to buy that vendor reserve but it's there if we need it okay so. And then I think it's important to uh, let folks know that you c uh, that stuff only works at certain temperatures. When we had that Arctic blast, right. the Polar Express or whatever they called it, <laughs> uh, uh, y it doesn't matter if you put s that on the, on pavement. It's not going to do anything. Right. Even today, you notice it's 8 degrees, and uh, right now all the salt's doing is turning it to slush. And that, that can be just as slippery as oh, ice. Yeah. Um, but we know the temperatures are supposed to get into the teens this afternoon, and mm -hmm. if the sun breaks out at all, that'll clear the roads off. But it, it, it slows it way down. Um, I saw a figure one time, below 10 degrees, you have to double your amount of salt to get the same work out of it. So salting under 10 degrees is not a very winning proposition, but sanding our highways isn't that great a solution either because the sand only stays there so long. and. Um, and then you have to clean it up in the spring. And the other question, gentlemen, that we get often at the station uh, is, well, why didn't they have the salt trucks out this morning or something? Because it's, it's slippery or, or what have you. When, when is it determined? Do the area law enforcement notify you and say, hey, listen, uh, roads are getting slick that, or the bridge is getting slick? How, how, what's, well, how's that determined? You know, off-duty hours, that call could be generated from the police department because they're running 24-7, so they're determining. They know best, you know, obviously, in their in their uh, patrols if, if the roads are getting slick. And so they'll call uh, Jim or, or anybody at the streets to just kind of put them on notice that they might want to get out and salt particular areas. And Jim can talk a, a bit about, you know, what specific areas they pay attention to. But that's, you know, they're not residential streets are not the priority. Again, no. it goes back to what's the highest priority. Right. Right. That's, that's uh, for off-duty hours, that's our best notification. The police officers are covering the city, and they know when they're getting slippery problems. And um, if, if it's a forecasted a snowfall that we know is going to start sometime after midnight, we'll get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and check, you know, see if we need to get somebody out there. And the one thing about early morning snowfalls like that is 
if you get more than an inch or two of snow, you can't just go out and salt it off. It doesn't work that way. The salt will get covered up, and uh, it really you've wasted the salt. So you have to get down to the road. You have to get the salt on the surface, and salt works by creating a brine. It has to get crushed up and, and start to mix with moisture for the brine to actually melt the snow. Uh, uh, if you'll see it on your sidewalk, you drop a, a grain of rock salt on there, all it's going to do is melt that one spot that's in contact with the rock salt. When you really get coverage is when it's crushed down and makes a salt water solution. Okay. That's when you start getting the melting. If, well, and that's a point that, you know, I think um, you hear a lot about cheese brine and beet juice and some of these yeah. new solutions being utilized in some cities and counties. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think uh, Jim and I spoke a bit about that, and it's something that we're looking into. Um, if it makes sense from a cost-benefit standpoint for us to retrofit a truck or a number of trucks to be able to do that, to deploy what what uh, is really a kind of a waste to some cheese production is the cheese brine and, and it's a liquid so it gets a contact as jim is referring to gets contact a lot quicker so it activates a lot quicker than a rock salt may do but it isn't the solution and it's kind of in its infancy and, mm -hmm. and the municipalities experience with it so um from a from a standpoint of if people are wondering well, what's wisconsin rapids doing as it relates to cheese brine or beet juice it's something that we're looking into and, and it won't be a solution likely this winter but could be uh, in the following winter. well basically this is where you contact your brethren <laughs> and other municipalities and, and right. who might be using this and go what's your experience right uh, there there's good and bad to to the brine solution and the pre-salting and pre-wetting and we want to make sure when we get into it we get into something that works for us the city did have a, a brining solution system years ago when i first started here and uh, it was inefficient they drive around with a load of salt and were intending to inject a calcium chloride solution into their spinner as the salt fell to oh, the ground that. and and they plugged up that solution is so sticky that it was plugging up the nozzles and they'd spend two hours out using up a load of salt and they would get back and their brine tanks were still full so we want to make sure we buy something that's tried and true and we don't want to be the lab rat that gets a system that doesn't work so okay i've uh, asked you enough questions i'm going to let you uh well, we got a caller. We got our first caller. On, uh, Jim, you put on your uh, uh, headsets, and we'll get to our first caller. Good morning. Okay. Uh -huh. Lost them. Uh, lost them, or uh, they were calling for another show. <laughs> uh, um, what uh, What could our citizens do that will help? Okay, there. We might maybe it was a bad cell connection. They're back on. Good morning. You're on the air with the mayor and Jim Borski, the street superintendent. Good morning. I got to share a story that happened to me yesterday with the snow. Okay. Um, I got done with work, and um, I work on the west side of Rapids, and I had to go to the east side of Rapids, and then I had to pick up a little one from daycare. And I got on a side road that was not plowed, and I was stuck in, like, dead center middle of the road. And a guy came with a shovel and shoveled the path, and then we drove the car and shoveled the path and drove the car and shoveled the path, drove the car to get through to the next road where it was pretty much plowed. And this guy came out of the blue and helped me. I want to thank him for that. And I believe he was sent from my guardian angel. I lost my daughter a month ago, okay. and I think she sent him to save me. Oh, okay. Well, thank uh, you for sharing. Thank you for sharing the story. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And I guess, Mayor, uh, that's something, too. Uh, now, people are digging out still. Help your neighbors, especially uh, seniors or folks who might be physically challenged and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it's take, take mm -hmm. time. And uh, you, you often see stories like that where mm -hmm. people get caught because you're in a street <laughs> that hasn't been plowed yet. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you stop, and you can't get started. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Especially scary. if the plow went through and created a little bit of a berm for, for them to get through. Who knows? It may have been Jim Borski out there himself <laughs> patrolling the streets yesterday. Funny, funny that, that was me last night. She went by my house, and I saw her stuck sideways in the road, so I went down and helped her. And it was tough. Her car wasn't getting through in the street. Our street hadn't been plowed yet, so her car was struggling to get through. And she picked up her child at daycare, and I gave her one last good push, and she got going, and away she went Just but enough it, to get out it took us a half hour or better yeah well, well, remind that's people too not to not to push the snow in the streets it's against city ordinance to i was gonna ask about the that I, I drove a little bit last night and uh you know 
people are snow blowing into the street, and and it just makes that much more work for the snow plow remo- uh, snow removal uh, crews of the city. And it's against city ordinance, so they can actually get a citation for it. So we want to remind people. That that's okay, what else could people do that would make your jobs easier? Well, I guess. I know yesterday was a tough one because of the timing of the snowfall. Everybody's got business to conduct during the day. But if, you know, when you hear that old uh, thing on the air, if you don't have to travel, don't, that right. would be the best. If if the cars would get off the road, if you don't have to go pick up that gallon of milk, don't do it, you know, and give us room to get it done. Uh, if we have to sit at a stop sign and wait for eight cars to go by, we're not getting anything plowed. So, mm-hmm. um that 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 and not blowing it into the streets and i know everybody this winter is going to get run out of space to put their sto- their snow that's just a fact um we'll start our roads are going to start getting narrower so that means you have to shovel further back to get to your mailbox it's just a simple fact there's only so much room to put the snow and we got to all try to get we along. Might, yeah, we might need to be putting up uh, those things on our <laughs> antennas on our vehicle so you the can old see 76, them. 76, yeah, on top of the antenna. <laughs> so you can balls. see, <laughs> okay, there's a vehicle coming. <laughs> but uh, we've had winters like this where yeah. the banks get high and you just have to be careful at intersections, right. especially. Right. Yeah, and Take slow down a little bit sooner before the intersection. It's It can be slippery, yeah. yeah that's the other the, thing, I think a couple of things. Yeah, we have a snow emergency, and obviously it's against ordinance to park in city streets right now. So we want to make sure that we remind people that if on residential streets in particular, it makes it that much more work for the plow trucks to, to have to go around. And if they're double parked, the plows can't get through, and so it really creates situation. And so in the situation of a snow emergency, they will be ticketed and towed. And so we want to make sure we remind people uh, to heed those warnings and those cautions. Yeah, and uh, those... Wisconsin Rapids and also the town of Grand Rapids have snow emergencies in effect until noon today so that crews can complete uh, their work. And as Jim has reported, Rapids is pretty well done. <laughs> right. But you, you, there might be other stuff that you need to do. Or right. We, you never can tell for sure how long it's going to take to plow. We, are, we do have one grader broke down right now, so we're a little slower than we would like to be. But um, we forecasted yesterday afternoon what we would need for a, a good a window of time to plow all the streets and we got done a little before but uh, that gives us time to go out and plow where there were car- cars parked in the road and we plowed around them and things like that i think one thing else that we wanted to mention mayor was mm-hmm. the nixel reports yeah um, right yeah the radio does a nice job of getting the news out for people but you have to be on that radio station so we're kind of promoting nixel and we put i have a, it on my phone right my cell phone. Mm-hmm. we put a nixel report out that will tell us tell the public that there are snow emergencies and you get it as a text message on your phone, um, it's really been helpful, and I I think it'd be nice if everybody would uh, pick up that service and get it on their. Yeah, you don't have to have a smartphone for that. Just a basic oh. cell phone with a text, mm-hmm. a messaging capability, and you'll get a text saying uh, "snow emergency in effect for Wisconsin Rapids till whenever." Mm-hmm. And it's as w- simple as texting in the our zip code five four four nine four nine five or any other zip code to eight 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 seven seven seven. So eight 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 seven seven seven. People can also go online and subscribe through Wood County Dispatch, I believe, mm-hmm. to get an email alert. So if they don't have you know, a phone both. or a text yeah. message, you know, have text messaging, um, they can also get an email or they can also subscribe to, I think, there's a way to call in, too, for the alerts uh, online on the phone. So. But, yeah, so, uh, and your phone will go off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it goes mm-hmm. off, and that's... It's a very fu- valuable service. It is. It's a very valuable service. Well, uh, Jim, you're probably ready for some rest. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Paul Vollard came in early and... Uh, He's ready for rest. I'm okay. sure if he isn't home already. But okay. Well, to all, all the people that were working so hard to try and keep things safe, thank you. And uh, uh, now we know a little bit more about mm-hmm. the process and what goes on, and we'll just get through it. It's a Wisconsin winter. We'll yep, get through we've it. Been through it before. Okay. Use common sense. <laughs> okay, Jim. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. And Mayor, we're going to take sure. our first Thanks. break of this hour. Uh, of the Morning Magazine is brought to you by Riverview Medical Center. With you, it's personal and comfort air. Part two is coming up. Uh, I don't know what's happening. Start a new check. What did I do? Okay. Wow. That is so weird. Hey! Hi! Hi! Oh my gosh. Hi! Hi. God, I don't even know what to say right now. I'm so nervous. Gia, you're so big. Come closer to the camera. <laughs> Wait, now you're in my face. <laughs> that was so good. Once again, here's Carl Hilke. 
Thanks again, Jerry, and welcome back, everybody, to today's show on AM 1320, as well as on the web at WFHR.com. Wisconsin Rampus Mayor Zach Berwick is here for the entire hour, and we have another special guest. He's invited, uh, and again, the phone lines are open at 424-2600, pound 1320 on your U.S. cellular phone. Uh, our next topic, the state of the city, Gloria Kubishak uh, from the League of Women Voters joins us. A uh, new tradition that started with mm-hmm. your administration. Yeah, time, yes. time of the year again. And, hope, yes, uh, and it hopefully is. it will be something after this uh, upcoming election, whether you're reelected or we have a new mayor, <laughs> that will continue. That is correct. Okay, so let's talk about the whole idea behind, first off, the state of the city uh, address. Well, thank you, Carl, for having me, and thank you, Mayor Verwink, as well. And as you know, our we pride ourselves as a League of Women Voters on keeping citizens informed and up-to-date. Very important part of being a citizen, basically. And we started this tradition of the State of the City Address last year and are continuing it this year and are helping host on Wednesday, January 29th at McMillan Library in the Fine Arts Center. And we will, this is free and open to all of the public. And we will have a question and answer period afterwards. And I know our honorable mayor intends to invite his city personnel to be there to help answer questions besides his answering questions as well. The league is very happy to be sponsoring a reception for a half hour before the address starts at 7 o'clock. So all of the public out there is invited to join us, meet you during that reception, and talk to you and chat with your city personnel as well. So that basically, Carl, is sums up what the event is all about. Okay, and then from... Your perspective, uh, it gives you an opportunity to update. Well, here's what I told you my priorities are, and here's where we're at. Here's what I did. Right, exactly. What was accomplished. Um, In addition, on the reception, I'll make a note on that. Um, At 630, um, department heads are uh, those that are more outward-facing, meaning public safety, streets, uh, planning and zoning, code enforcement, etc. We'll, this year, have, uh, we're calling it Bringing City Hall to You. So in addition to them just being available at the event. Uh, They also have some pertinent information about their department, some basic need to know. A lot of people um, will call my office or call me directly and say, you know, how do I report an ordinance violation of the neighbor next to me or uh, something down the street or something I saw uh, somewhere else in the city? So just giving residents some basic information about how departments operate and how to interact with those departments. A lot of city services now, um, a number of city services are now available online. So if somebody wants to pull building permit uh, to build uh, a new structure or, you know, uh, submit building plans, they can do that online now. Uh, and a lot of people may be not aware of that. So hmm. this will be an opportunity for departments to interact directly with the public that may be in attendance uh, to answer questions, as we've talked, but also to get some basic um, dates out. When is brush pickup, monthly brush pickup? When is, um, you know, my recycling day? You know, just some basic information well, for residents. I'm just thinking this is the winter season and people might like my, myself are planning remodeling projects at mm-hmm. home I, mm-hmm. I need to have a lot of work done on my house but uh, we might this would be a good event to go find out okay what's the permitting process uh, right. who's, who's responsible is that the contractor yep. or, or you know Yep. Cetera, and who do I talk to at City Hall? You know, when yeah. you go there, there's a number of department heads, and this would be a quick and easy way for those individuals okay. to make a first initial contact, grab a business card with a phone and an email address on it uh, so they can schedule a time to come to City Hall to visit with a department head. Um, so that's really something new that we're trying this year uh, at the reception is just making sure that beyond myself, all these other department heads all have an expectation and a responsibility to be uh, interactive with inter- interacting with the public, and this is a great opportunity for yep. them to so do so. So if you are... Someone who's planning some uh, project uh, uh, when the weather gets warmer and the snow <laughs> is all gone, mm-hmm. uh, this would be the opportunity to make a uh, facial contact with, with the person you may need to talk to. That's exactly Or right. you're a business person mm-hmm. that's looking at an expansion plan or something like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And now the, uh, the, the, there's going to be the reception. At 6.30 on January 29th. And then the, the address at 7 o'clock. Right next door, the all-purpose room adjoins the Fine Arts Center at the library, as you know. And the other thing, Carl, is um, we are recommending that people would RSVP because there is, of course, limited seating at the library. And we don't want to necessarily turn people away, uh, 
But if you go to the city website, www.wirapids.org, the first thing that will come up is a picture of our honorable mayor, and it talks about the state of the city, what time it is, what date it is. And right on there is this RSVP button. And that's all you have to do is just take that mouse and click right there. Or if you don't want to do it by a computer, you can just simply call the city 421-8216 and they will take your reservation as well. Mm -hmm. That's highly encouraged. You don't have to, but we highly encourage that because of limited seating. Okay, okay. And will this uh, be uh, broadcast ver on a variety of media yes. platforms? Yeah, good yes. Good question. Excellent. Mm -hmm. I think um, you're going to be broadcasting uh, pizza, pieces of it, if not the whole address here, yeah. uh, time permitting. Yeah. Yes. Um, we're also going to be live streaming it on uh, cable access, so the River Cities Community Access Channel will well, be Well, what I it. may do, I'm going to check with our what our sports schedule is for yeah, that depending. night, that because if it's, if it's not... Uh, if it's open, and what I'm going to suggest to Bob is I'll come in here and we'll do like what we do with the forums. Uh, with the forums, hmm. we can simulcast this monitor right here. It's right. sure. plugged into the board here. I watch the whole thing and join it, and, and we do a, uh, a simulcast. Excellent. Excellent. Well, and how fortunate we are to have River Cities Community Access because I know, having spoken with Tom Laux, the director there, they will, if you cannot, if our public, for some reason, you cannot attend the event, they will be replaying it several times um, for certain. So um, we do have that advantage. If for some reason the weather doesn't cooperate, which, as I recall, last year, Mayor, it did mm -hmm, not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had, the, we had the library parking lot cleared, and yeah, that was the extent of it, I <laughs> think, as a exactly cruise right. I remember right that. Yeah, yes, it was snow. incredible. Mm -hmm. But that's all right. Here. I managed. We managed, and we had, a, we had a wonderful, there was a wonderful group of people who were there, and all of your city personnel. Mm -hmm. That was just mm -hmm. terrific. Okay, so this is your opportunity, basically. For yes, folks. it is. To, and, and for the mayor, what, you want to give us any... <clears throat> Hints mm -hmm. or uh, uh, what the theme <laughs> of your address will be? Yeah, well, good question. Uh, so a lot of what we talked about the last address was how do we build a stronger local economy? What is it going to take to create jobs in Wisconsin Rapids? And uh, so I'll be following up on what's been accomplished in this last year. What did I promise? First of all, what did I promise last year? And then what, what's been accomplished over the course of 2013? Uh, and then we'll spend a bit of time talking about what we plan to do for 2014, um, knowing that a lot of these initiatives don't happen overnight and really to show results it takes some time so uh, this address will take the opportunity to go through that so building a stronger local economy is primarily um, first and foremost in everyone's mind uh, followed by what are we doing to beautify our community and, and promote redevelopment uh, so that's going to be another piece that we'll talk about okay. as well we got a, a quick uh, question here mm -hmm. from a caller good morning you're on the air you have a question for the mayor or for Gloria yes of course can we from the town of Grand Rapids, we're invited also. Oh, correct? absolutely. Uh, yeah. All right. Absolutely. We're, in fact, all of the surrounding areas. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Strongly encouraged. Okay, thank you. We much. are all connected. That's it. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the call. Okay. So, mark it down. Wednesday, January 29th. Yep. End of the month. I think it's the evening after President Obama's State of the Union address. Mm. No, his on Tuesday. I, sure. I, I'm quite uh, sure uh, that's and when he's scheduled. We got the scheduled. governor's State of the State uh, next yes, week. Yes, so that, that State Tuesday. of the State next week. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's that time of the year. Yes, it <laughs> certainly <laughs> is. But how fortunate we are! And again, we encourage all of our public to attend if they, if weather permits, and. Otherwise, it will be broadcast on uh, RCCA, and it will be rebroadcast several times as right, well. Right. Yeah. It'll also be available yeah. on YouTube. The other thing that, um, you know, I think just being present at the event is very important simply because you can interact yes. and ask questions, yes. uh, something you don't get to do on a daily basis, and so we want people to be afforded that opportunity. And you don't have to be a rich mucky muck, just a regular citizen. Right. Yes. We want everybody to attend. And we mm -hmm. just show up. Or, and if you can RSVP, uh, give them the phone number again, Gloria. 421-8216 or just simply call City Hall mm -hmm. yeah. if you in trying to remember that number. Or you can go on the computer, wirapids.org. And again, as I said before, that's the first thing that will come up on your screen with a picture of the mayor and the state of the city, the date, the time, 7 o'clock. 
and then you just push the RSVP button. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Uh, okay. Well, I thank you, Gloria, for Well, helping. thank you, Carl. Okay. It's been a pleasure. Okay. And uh, we're, we're going to take a break, and then we're going to talk about, speaking of beautification, a grant uh, that the city has received, and mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about an item or items coming up on the next city council uh, agenda. Gloria, mm -hmm. thank you again. Thank you, Carl. Thank oh, okay. you, Mayor Fruick. Yes. Okay, and with that, we're going to take our final break uh, this hour here on The Morning Magazine on AM 1320 and on WFHR.com.